Mic test, one, two, one, two. Mic test, one, two, one, two. Mic test, one, two, one, two. Okay, let's stop that echo, but that works, cool. Um, let's see, one, I, two. You know what? Okay, so there's about three seconds lag, that's not too bad. Let's play the Stanley Parable. Um, I'll probably be speaking on Beam more than I'll be speaking on here. Just that's all for right. Convenience. That's that's mainly directed at Royal, by the way. Oh, okay. The game doesn't. Oh, there we go. I thought I crashed it then with all my clicking on uh, for Discord. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Just tell me if the audio is too quiet. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions call a meeting, or even say, hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Well, looks like we're going to be stepping out of our office. Yes. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. There seems to be loads of memos. No around. matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. What did I say? Can I jump? Let's not waste electricity. Huh, that's odd. It's not loading. The stream's not loading? Yeah. I try reloading. Oh, there we go. Don't know why that. Yeah, it sometimes happens with non-FTL streams. Yeah. I hate Mondays too. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Right, just because I want to try this. Hello, hello. What was that? That was a poll vote. You can vote using the vote now button at the top. Oh, 
They still can't jump. Poor Stanley. Enter. Okay, so we're going in the left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Aw, oh, rip friends. Jim. talk, I guess. Let's go find our boss. Ooh. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Should we still be here? It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> I mean, that kind of looks like a radiation symbol on the top are of you, that coil. Are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? No, I'm saying... Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Well, I'm not standing, so... You, you're definitely confused. You do realise there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said, Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Well, you know, if it's not important to the story, why would it be here anyway? Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friends, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Do my friends find this concerning? I have no idea. Stanley was fat and ugly probably. and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Nope, Stanley's on the up and up. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here, when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Okay, time to step out into the hallway, I ah, guess. second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Back in the closet. Back in the closet. You too? Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, 
You can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Okay, let's get the story back on track. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. than 30 seconds to be honest. Even the receptionists here. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. <laughs> Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad knowing full well the sheer statistical unlikelihood that this would ever result in a correct combination. If he knew that the combo was 2845, it would be another story entirely. But no, no, this is what he was going to do instead. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, <laughs> since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Two, eight, four, five. Yet incredibly, <laughs> by simply now. pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Loading. Can I? F I just noticed in Discord now. Can I form my question into a chart? Um, one hundred percent says yes. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. But that says escape. Hello, hello. Escape from in control. Mm, I could probably make that. 
If light is on, call extension 914 immediately. That's worrying. I don't think the elevator goes back up either. Mind control. Oh, it's dark. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did wow, this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Imagine Netflix and chill in here. Observation protocol. I can't read that. Now the monitors jump to life. Their true nature revealed. Whoa. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. That looks like an error. Jeez. Quite a CCTV state. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Spooky. No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Off or on? Hello, hello. Oh, Stanley. Ooh, you didn't did I? just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Okay, well, apparently oh, I turned them on by accident. Whoops. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. No, I'm afraid no, no, no. you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, oh, isn't dear. it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, 
what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested I'm away so from you, confused. it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room so was confused. capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, door? anything, something here will oh, save door. me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds what? until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. So, uh, I'll try and do that correctly next time. My whoopsie daisy. Wait, anyone else the noticed the narrator hasn't started speaking yet? When Stanley oh, came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single Gasp. person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. That's really good tips for, for dealing with co-workers. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through paper. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music.
feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. So how about that calming New Age music? Needs more Monster Cat! Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Well, he knows what secret it holds. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he... Oops. I broke everything. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command! Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Well, I will once the fog goes away. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Aww, happy Stanley. We're back in our office again. I don't 
phone ringing. The one that you just looked at. I just wanted to leave you a message to let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. Huh. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So I guess we'll go right this time. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Totally worth it. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Mm, I'm gonna go this way. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Wait, what? Do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. It will cause death. Penalty for misuse of the cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, $5,000. So even though you die, they'll still find you $5,000. Incredible. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? Really? I was in the <laughs> middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Danger. Danger everywhere. Warning, do not stand on this side of fence. There's not really abstract Now listen carefully, here. this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Ooh, red or blue door, red or blue door, red or blue door. Jump. I would, oh, right, jump off the thing. Right. You, you, you could put this into the beam chat, it'd be so much easier, because I don't actually look over on the left screen. Uh, so let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Hello, hello. Blue or red, blue or red, blue or red. Because instinctually I just want to go through the blue door. But maybe that's just because I'm blue. Blue door! Aha! Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Blue door! I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh, there's a blue All door right, here. fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? 
There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? <laughs> Was it I worth bet. ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Hmm. Ooh, that's a pickle. Which door? Door number one, two, or three? Come on, Cryo Royal, work with me here. One, two, or three. Mm. One, two, three. Cryo says three. Because you haven't seen it. I haven't seen that door either. I've never been to this bit of the game before. So I've got no idea what going through any of these doors means. Okay, let's go through this one. Okay, I'm going Ooh. to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Hmm. So, was that better? I don't think it was. I'm going to go two. Oh, well, now this is useful. You didn't like it, but you didn't totally hate it either. You enjoyed it perhaps is the correct term. It didn't cause you excruciating pain. Big steps we've made here today, Stanley. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Oh, you'd have rated it four? Oh, okay. Ooh, that's cool. Worldwide leaderboard. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, look, Stanley, we're at the bottom. I think that's actually how long we've played. Oh, I'm stuck now. Okay, let's go this way. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Well, did it make us feel motivated? It didn't really make me feel motivated. A three. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. Oh, dear. Feels like Portal. Yeah, it takes the In piss game, out of the what? The baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of what? course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Okay, so notes of my experience thus far. Babies are stupid. I mean, I could just let it go. Oh god, no.
You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <coughs> yes, this seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Minecraft? Oh god, it is Minecraft. Well, it's Sandy, cool. is this any better? Oh, wait. At I last, the one thing you've always desired. A game I had absolutely nothing to do with. But is it enough? Tell me that, Stan. I can't jump. Will it ever jump. be enough? Well, I'll say this. I'm done making things for you. From now oh, on, I will only create to like fulfill a greater cool. artistic purpose. Watch this, Stanley. I'm going to build a house. <laughs> this will go here. No, here. And then... Let's see, what does it need? I, uh, yes, of course. And just to finish it all off, yes, it's complete. God. I made this, Stanley. Look at it. Gaze upon my work of art and feel ashamed at your own inadequacy. Ah, but you've only seen it from the outside. You've only gotten half the experience. Please, step inside and make yourself comfortable. Isn't it actually it has the Minecraft sound Isn't it effects. perfect? It could only be better if... Wait, that's it. We must rebuild it out of diamond. Diamond everything. Yes, yes, yes. Come along, Stanley. We have to go mining. Mining for diamonds. Oh, my. It looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? Have I, brought a d have I brought a light? No, I haven't. Oh, look, mushrooms. Oh, no, 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 no. This is far more open-ended than I had in mind. I'm looking for something more narrow and linear. Something that makes you feel utterly irrelevant. This won't do oh, at dark. all. One out of five. Even the diamonds Let's couldn't see. save this one. Okay, new game. Um, they probably did ask Mojang for permission. Also, did you spell that permission on purpose? Oh, hey, Paul. <laughs> yes! I don't even know what this game is, but I love it. You, trapped in a glass box with no way out, listening to me talk. Oh, it's insane. Oh, my God, it actually has the portal music. I couldn't music. have done it any better myself. What is this game even supposed to be? I can't figure it out. Okay, now I'm curious. Let's go find out what the hell this is. I'm gonna take the radio with me. Oh, it's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. Your forte. Genius. No, actually, you know what? I think that's plenty. I really don't care much to see you stumble through any more of these games, and I highly doubt you're any wiser for the experience. Which is why, rather than continue to waste my time, I'm just going to leave you here. You can pretend you've beaten the game if it makes it any richer for you, but as for me, I've had enough. So, why don't you get cozy in this room, and if you have any grand revolutionary ideas for the perfect video game, you can just sit there and let it ball up inside you for all eternity. I don't need your advice. I don't need your ratings. And I certainly don't need the validation of a man whose job is to push buttons. I think I'll just go about my business making meaningful cultural contributions to the world. And perhaps every now and then, I'll think back to a man named Stanley who was objectively wrong in every decision he ever made. The thought won't last long. Wow, he's Goodbye, great. Stanley. Good luck with your work.
It's dark. I want to fall off the edge. I don't know where else to go. I'm try oh, damn it, the radio. Oh, even the radio stopped working. Oh. I have genuinely no idea if I have to actually do something here. Or what I'm supposed to do. Like, am I supposed to jump off or something? Or go down here maybe? Or that looks like it goes off the edge. What do I do? That makes computer clicky sounds. Play with these office chairs? No. Nope. Nope. I'm so confused. What do I do? Guess I just jump off the edge, maybe. Oh, I'll go with the radio then, I guess. This is like the original Stanley Parable game, and no, I lost the radio, I don't know where it went. So wait, if I just keep going back this way, I'll get back to our office, won't I? Four two five, four two six, four two six, four two seven. Huh. Interesting. Cool. Weird. Ooh. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. Hmm. The end is never the end, is never the end, is never the end, is loading. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it Crash. mean? Crash! Go back in! Stanley what? decided go to go in. to the meeting oh, room. Closed. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a like set of two open, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. So we went this wow. way, we went yes, through here. Yes, this room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. So there was the other way we went. Stanley so was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five here. years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. 
I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Three, two, someone you've one, forgotten jump. about. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Yes. Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. So let's go through the red door. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. I'm Don't you see that it's killing you, Stanley? I just... I wanted to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here. Let me show you. Do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? Ooh, that's creepy. I don't like that. Here. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> No, wait. Where are you going? Oh no. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. No! Oh, thank God. You lived. You had me worried there for a moment. Now, can we please get back to the other room? There. See? This is what you want. This is where we can both be happy. We really can. If we stop moving, we just have to stop moving. Stanley, go back. There's nothing good that can come from this. Oh. No. No, no. What do you... Do you just not believe me? What can I say to convince you? <laughs> Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? Oh, it my sounds God. like cryo Is pouty. this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill oh. yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Earth. I feel bad, but... Maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, did you actually want to stay alive? Or are you just teasing me? I wanted us to be happy here, Stanley. I really did. I wish I still thought that was possible.
do they? What will they do? I take it there's no actual end in this room apart from jumping. Start, isn't it? I'm going back. Oh, poor guy. Right, so stay in the office, he said. So what? Just mess with the oh. But okay. Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go anywhere except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had Looks the like ability to tell. Though, but to the, the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He time? will be spoken to. No, he not. will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to, when a, set Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the, he entered the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire have I it. Have memo? I probably have missed The lounge memo. was sublime, I frequently a work of miss art. Memos. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first so open door on his left. His first open door on our left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. There's a maintenance thing here, and I really want to push this button. Have I ever missed an important memo? Um... Yes, yes I have, at one point. It meant that I was late to my own, um... But Stanley didn't like want to go back to the office. The he wanted to wander about and get even further off track. For some of the work so I'd now in doing. order to get back, he needed to go, um... So, uh, yeah. Uh, oh. From here, it's, um... Basically, missing left. going out with food with, uh, for food with my colleagues. Because I made a, a mistake. Oh, no. Ooh. No, it's to the right, my mistake. No, 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 ah. not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Oh, dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Basically. Now, let's see. We went down right, left, I missed a party. Down, I don't think it was a surprise left, party. Right. Yep, yep. Okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely, this way. <laughs> no! 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 This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here Whoops. yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Quick, quick, look okay, away, look okay, away, look okay, away, look okay, away, look okay, away. We just have to get back to um. Oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about, rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. From the top. 
All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley... Wait. Wait, wait what? What? No, I'm... No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over, completely fresh. Everything could be... <laughs> oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere, or... A... Hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. Find the story. This looks like story stuff. Oh, what's that say? Everyone knows what you did. They're just holding back to let you torture yourself. Wow, that's deep. That's that's very deep. Wait, what? How do we end up back I'll here? I'll say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... Do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again. But it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? <laughs> yeah, the game is rather passive-aggressive right now. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <laughs> okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible oh, the dear. story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? Okay, let's go this way then. Well, there's a spilt coffee cup this time. I wasn't there before. Uh, something over here? No. Aha! I knew we'd miss huh. something. The story. Here it comes. No, wait. Never mind. <laughs> Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Where now this, there? well, I'll be honest, I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Congratulations! Yay. I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so, good job. Where'd the door oh, go? No. no, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. Ooh. All right, I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Huh. Okay, so this way. You see? The line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the is. act of moving forward, are we implying a journey uh, such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature the of life itself? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? 
I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. Cut the music, go back and look at that fern. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. Okay, it's a fern. This is the fern I'm supposed to be looking at, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it can't be that important. Wait, what? we're back at the office? No, no, no. Line, you do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Let's go this way, this way, this way. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Well, it no, goes no, back again. to the How story, could you I have guess. Done this to us? And after we trusted you, <laughs> after everything we've been through, you. Well, oh, I can't take this anymore. To hell with it. Restart. <laughs> Line take two. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? Okay, let's go this way. This doesn't seem like an office. Now. Yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. I swear. Oh, no, not oh. you again. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it. We should be fine. <laughs> the line is rather drunk. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay, so I know that each door has to lead somewhere, which means that somewhere at the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that in turn means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And well. since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. Right door. Ooh. Oh, hold up. What's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? Uh, it's all one I'll giant ending? End, turn around, find all the and we're supposed end. to restart so the game restart, eight, eight times? Find the line again. That's really how it always goes? Previous restart. It's all Stanley attempts to play determined? Story it. So now, according to the schedule, I restart huh. again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? 
Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this... this... thing... wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really... No, it can't be. I... I don't want it to be. I... I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And the time it uh, stopped? Does that mean... Uh... Did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever it is that made this schedule? How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. I guess now we just wait. You know, I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story. Wouldn't you agree? No, I'm not, not quite really. sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime... <laughs> Welcome back, Cryo. Ooh, spooky. I have no idea what happened, but there was just a buzzer, and we're All back in All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? So Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had room simply missed a memo. Doors, there won't be anything there again. Uh, oh, there is. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So do I go left? Huh. Okay. That was Yet there weird. was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping him coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I think we all know the Damn. drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. <laughs> Kill surprise. The narrator seems really, uh... Upset, I guess? Maybe that's not the right word? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word Escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. That can't possibly The door be behind true. him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. That does look like death. Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise. He reflected that his yeah. life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Yikes. Oh. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Huh.
and yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Stanley's office, through the main part, down here. Parable credits. Is this the end of the end of the game? Have we been here before? This is all the things that are in the game. Zending levers. I can't actually pull these. It's quite nice actually. I like it. The zending went through many iterations. This way. 
Oh, so it's actually the trailers for the Stanley Parable. Maybe? I mean, it's quite nice that they've actually put all this in the game. Although it's a bit confusing to get to, it's it's quite nice actually, because it does give you a little bit of touch about what they were actually doing during the development of the game. Even if the whole game is just a piss take of the game itself. I've been down this one. Where am I going? Oh, here we go. Freedom. Did I break it? Oh, there we go. What's down here? Freedom ending. Person to the boss's office. Clock. The clock would be really cool if it kept up to date with the. Um, if it kept up to date with like your local time. Yeah. down there. No outtakes. No jokes. Just a quiet look around the Stanley Parable Museum. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> oh. oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Oh. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Do I quit? I, I don't want to quit. But she said quit. could quit. We could end it all. Begin the game again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. This doesn't seem right. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first... But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. 
I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? Well, the no, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? With a you actually power cable. chose no incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No. It's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. Still blinking, it's How many are you in. making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices, and to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that it's kind of risk on my severe. watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. <laughs> um, I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack? I, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do in this Excellent. case. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Uh... Ah, welcome Whoa. back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. 
Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. I don't think reality is well equipped to deal with reality. Do not lie. If you're lying right now, stop. I'm not lying. I swear, I swear I'm not lying. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Oh, Quickly, dear. hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Oh, oh it's dear. ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage, it... Well, it's worthless now! And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have oh, to. Oh, dear. Is that it? I'm still here, here in this pile of rubbish, with you, you, who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands yes, that if I say to do something, to there's a damn good it's reason for it. Always that thought hadn't even occurred to, to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Oh. ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll uh. be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry... Oh? ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll so be fine. Yes, All right. we'll left this <clears> time, <throat> did she? When Stanley came to a set Very of two bad. open doors, he entered the door on his left. Let's enter the door on the left. Oh, 
Oh, Yet there was not a single person story. here either. Ah. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, yeah. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. That's different. This is different. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Aww. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Uh, Night Shark 115? Uh, Night Shark 115. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. Night Shark 115. This isn't gonna work, is it? There's nothing I can press to make it work either. I don't I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. There's nothing I can okay, do. Okay, fine. You're not gonna do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows it. what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. Oh. Oh. When Stanley different. came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hey, look, it's Stanley. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. The end. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It Aww. needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time yeah, to that's make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. Thank you, Galactic I'll Cafe. For you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. And with that nearly eh, an hour and 45 minutes, that's probably it for the Stanley Parable. So I'm going to jump off now. And yeah. Bye bye.